and some addictions that you were fighting against. You know the invisible prisons that you live in? The things that you do over and over again? I, I was thinking about how some of us are invis in, in invisible prisons today even as we try to appear free to people. There is a, there is a spiritual depression on so many, so, so many thousands that I will preach to this weekend and nobody can see it because we paint the walls with a smile but we live behind bars on the inside. It's an invisible prison. It's ways of thinking and, and reasoning and fearing. Because when I realized John was in two different prisons at the same time, it clarified the text for me. One was the one that Herod Antipas put him in for, for, for saying what he didn't want to hear, but the other one was an invisible prison. The other one is one that I'm all too familiar with. This is the prison of your expectations. This is the prison of your plans. This is the prison of what you thought God was going to do. You know, hey, go ask Jesus. Are you the one? Because, uh, I told everybody you were the one. I told everybody you had your fork. You're about to start a fire. Watch what the messengers say back to, 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 to John. They say, Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. Look at this list. The blind receive sight, the lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. Watch what wasn't in that verse. The fork and the fire. Jesus wasn't doing any of the things that John wanted him to do. Read the list again. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. And the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Go tell John that. And John's like, I'm just checking Jesus. Where's the fork? Where's the fire? You know, WTF. Um, have you ever had a moment? Why y'all hate me today? You, you never had a, where's the fork? Where's the fire? John is having a moment. John is in a WTF moment with the Lord. Walk out if you want to, but if you'll be really honest, if you'll be really honest, there are some things in your life you're trying to figure out right now. Come on, where is it? Where is it? What in the world is this? Somebody shout, what is this? What is this? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I just need to know because I thought you were gonna. And that is the prison that we spend so much of our lives in. What we thought God was gonna do. But I got a question for you. What if he really is able to do immeasurably more than you ask or imagine? What if he wants to do something so much better than your mind can comprehend? Would you be open to that? What if God didn't want to meet your expectations because he wanted to exceed them? And now I'm going to make you sit back down because you're not going to like this. The way he grows my faith is usually to disappoint my expectation. John's like, um, this? This is what I gave up my ministry for? This? I gave my life to Jesus and I'm still struggling with depression and anxiety? This? Because it was your expectation of deliverance that is causing your disappointment. Go tell John, watch this. Blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk. 
Tell him I'm touching people that nobody else would touch that were quarantined because of this dreadful disease called leprosy, and they're able to go back to their family because they're cleansed and they can live their life. Tell him all that. But you know, he's not making this up, right? This is what he came to do. This is what he announced that he came to do in Luke chapter 4. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's quoting Isaiah 61 because he is fulfilling the prophecy. Not fulfilling their preferences, fulfilling the prophecy. It's very different. He's fulfilling what he said he was, not what they thought he was going to be. That's what God is trying to deliver us from. You see it? From what we thought he was going to be. He's so much bigger than that. He's so much better than that. His plan is so much bigger than that. His purpose is so much greater than that. And John said, Are you the one? He said, Go back and tell him that the, the deaf hear and the blind see and the lepers are touched and, 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 the, and the eyes of the blind are open and the ears of the deaf. This is all from Luke chapter 4. Look it up when he unrolled the scroll, when he stood up to read in his hometown. And he said, This day is this prophecy fulfilled in your hearing. I, I came, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, recovery of sight to the blind. Uh, he sent me to open deaf ears. He sent me to do all this. But one thing he left out when he sent the message to John, and this is crazy, Zach, because I know how much you love the Bible, so it's going to blow your mind. The only thing that he left out, he added some stuff to it, but he left one thing out, freedom for the prisoners. Look it up right now. Reference me. It's in Luke 4. I can wait. I know I'm right about this. Unless you got some weird Bible that you made for yourself. Luke 4? It's like 18, 19, something like that. What's it say? 18, 19? What does it say? Spirit Lord's point. This is Rick Parker, the one that y'all always hear on the podcast. The one you Hey Rick. You know you're famous on the podcast. He's the one always talking back to me. The country guy. He's always talking back to me. People ask me all the time, who's that country guy that's always talking back to you? That's Rick Parker. What does it say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gospel to the poor. Heal the broken heart. Liberty to the captives. Where's that? He said, Tell John, I'm doing it all. Tell John that, that everything I said I would do, I'm doing it. But what I said I would do is not what he was expecting. And tell John that I need his faith not to rest in his idea of who he thought I was. I'm going to preach this home right now. I need his faith not to rest in whether or not I fulfill his agenda. Look, so many of the things that Jesus did in the scripture, it was a hidden agenda. In fact, he even spoke in parables, not so the people would get a cute little story about a father and a son, and he ran away and he ate with the pigs, and the father welcomed him home. That isn't why he taught in parables. He taught in parables because he didn't want his wisdom to be ascertained with the human mind. He taught in parables so that the Spirit of God could reveal to the unlearned, not the wisdom of this world, but the things of God. So much of what he does is hidden, and yet we spend all of our time in our minds trying to figure out whether God is good, trying to figure out whether life makes sense. It's a prison. You'll never figure it out that way. You can't get out that way. You can't solve your problems on the level of self. It's going to take a great big God with an eternal plan. It's going to take a really good God. It's going to take a majestic God. And I'm going to have to decide whether or not I'm going to interpret him through the lens of my expectations or set my expectations on the basis of who he is. Now, here's what I know. I am preaching to so many different types of people today. For some of you, you can hardly breathe right now because I'm speaking so specifically to you because the Lord is trying to get this message to you. For others of you, you're in a much more dangerous place. You're not even listening. You know what God uses to develop your faith? Disappointment. You know what the devil uses to destroy your faith? Disappointment. 
and I think it's what you do with it. Because it's going to happen. It's going to happen in relationships. It's going to happen in careers. It's going to happen in churches. To where what you thought it was going to be and what it really is. You know, I don't even like the way this Bible story goes because what I want to happen next in the story is that the angel of the Lord comes, breaks John out of prison. And John goes on to preach the gospel, and he has more success and double for his trouble like Job, like never before. And the Lord restores the years the canker worm is wasting. We can have good church and all get a serotonin hit, go home, be happy, and uh, watch a NASCAR race. <laughs> but what I'm thinking is, I need to tell you that the way you expect this story to end, since we're talking about expectations, is not necessarily the way that it does, because John, John doesn't get out of prison. In Matthew chapter 11. In fact, in Matthew 14, his head is served up on a platter because the, the king decides to, to cut it off him. And yet, there's something that's even more beautiful in the text than John getting what he wants. There's something much more profound than John gets what he wants. And, and what it is, is in verse 7 and following. Now, this transitional phrase is really important. By the way, who am I preaching to today? That there's been some things that weren't what you thought they were going to be, and it's affecting your faith now. And even in a sense, God is not who you thought he was going to be, and you're experiencing him in a different way than you have a template for, and it's challenging to you. So what happens next is the part of the message that I really want you to take to heart, because it says, as John's disciples were leaving… What does that mean? Whatever Jesus says next, John doesn't hear it. He turns to the crowd and begins to speak about John. This is significant, because what he says next is what he wants the crowd to know about John. What he said before was what he wanted John to know about him. And it's a critical distinction because God never wants your faith to rest on you. He knows how fragile and fickle you are. He said, Go tell John that there is a purpose that is greater, there is a plan that is bigger. Say that. There is a purpose that is greater, there is a plan that is bigger. I'm looking for 100% participation on every location. There is a purpose that is greater. There is a plan that is bigger. Look at the person next to you say, There is a purpose that is greater. There is a plan that is bigger. Other neighbor, there is a purpose that is greater. There is a plan that is bigger. Tell them, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Because you've been seeing this one little thing, and when you're in the prison of your mind, it's an awfully small place, isn't it? It's really hard to see the light of day in solitary confinement. But go tell John we're right on schedule. Go tell John I'm using his preparation. Go tell John it wasn't in vain. I heard the Lord say, Furtick, go tell John. Go tell the people. Go tell the discouraged. Go tell the beaten. Go tell the broken. Go tell the depressed. Go tell Go tell the sick. Go tell the broke. Go tell the hurting. Go tell the young. Go tell the old. Go tell them it's working. Go tell them I'm doing it, just not like you wanted me to. But I'm doing it. He turns around and says to the crowd, What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? No, John wasn't fickle. John wasn't fragile. When John made up his mind about something, that's just the way it was. And that's what's getting him in trouble. Because he made up his mind about what he thought God was going to do. And when God did what God wanted to do. Is that you right now? Are you in? An invisible prison. I know Herod isn't going to cut your head off. It's not that dramatic, right? But you can't enjoy people, can you? 
Is that you right now? You can't create. Is that you right now? Is that me? Who am I preaching to? Maybe I'm preaching to me. It's not that God didn't do anything for me. It's not that God didn't bless me. It's just different than what I thought. And as long as I'm in the prison of what I thought, I can't be a part of what God is doing. So be set free today. Be set free by the fact that, that God may not be conforming to your agenda or keeping all of your appointments. God might not be organizing everything to match your exact preference, but there is a greater purpose. And there is a bigger picture. And just like John was the forerunner of Jesus Christ, some of you, God is using you to fight battles for your children and your children's children. And your children's children's children will be blessed if you don't fall away. If, if you don't fall away. If you will resist the urge to control God, you can serve him and worship him, and it'll be all right, because my faith is not the expectation that circumstances will be pleasant. My faith is the expectation that the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Go tell John. Blessed is he who does not trip over the way he thought it was going to be. Blessed is he who accepts what I'm doing in his or her life. And the Lord wants to set you free today from the way you thought that it was going to be. And that's it. And that's it. Because you know what's going to happen once you get set free from the way you thought it was going to be? You can embrace what it is. And you know what God's going to do? More than what you thought he was going to do. The blind see. The lame walk. God's got something better than a fork. God's got something better than a fire. The first place of deliverance is in the area of your expectation. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.